Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Melissa Smith, Conservatory Director and Head of Acting of the American Conservatory Theatre. Melissa has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Melissa, for joining us today. Glad to be here. So acting theater in today's multimedia, big screen, 3D, virtual reality world. Talk about why acting, why theater is so important to our culture and to our sense of self. Well, a live experience in the theater is totally different than a virtual experience. And it's actually one of the few places where people still come together in community. And I don't know that a lot of people realize when they go to the theater, although they experience this at a good show, that the audience is the last character to come in. Uh, just last night at ACT, we had a reading of a play that Annette Benning was in with another actor, Mark Harlick. And the audience loved this play. It's called Dear Liar, the letters of uh, George Bernard Shaw and Mrs. Patrick Campbell. And they added to the whole show because they were so responsive. You can't have that on television or uh, on the web or in the film theater. It's more of a one-way thing where the audience receives the film, but they don't participate in the same way. And I think today it's one of the reasons people still go to the theater, and not just to the theater, but to other live performances. There is reality television. There are more and more computer-generated effects and even computer-generated characters, but you still need actors to create those characters. And when I hear people talk about acting, they don't go on and on about avatars. They go on and on about particular actors and their performances. And I think that's as relevant today as it was to the Greeks or maybe the oldest form of theater. Somebody said to me that the art is in the imperfection. The art is not in the, the uh, precision and the repetition that happens every night. The, the art is between the discipline of ensuring that you are uh, providing the, the, the lines that, that are written, but um, the, the real nuance of the performance is really where the audience and the actors communicate in real time. Absolutely. I mean, that's why improvisation is part of actor training. And some of the favorite moments in a performance, I think an audience actually loves it when something goes wrong. And they tend to lean forward then for the rest of a show, and all the actors lean forward. And often you get a standing ovation because something went wrong and the facade of perfection was broken. But I, I think that at the heart of that is improvisation. And most training involves some class in improvisation or exercises in improvisation so that it's not, actors are really learning how to memorize lines but then forget that they memorized them so that they are playing with one another as though those lines are coming for the first time. How do you cultivate the skill that actors must have in, a, in a, an environment where there are a decreasing number of theaters mm -hmm. and there are a decreasing number of opportunities for actors to, uh, to make their living? Uh, acting has never been particularly remunerative other than for the lucky few, uh, but it's becoming a more difficult uh, profession to follow. How do you assure the quality of performance that you wish to have? Well, I think one of the things that, I mean, one of the things is that we have a training program. It's a three-year MFA program, and it's one of the top programs in the country. Three years is an immersion in actor training. So you're training the body, you're training the voice, you're training the imagination, you're training the intellect. And you can't, you're there, the students are there 12 hours a day. But I, I think it's also true that once they graduate, a generation ago there used to be rep companies and actors who were always on salary. So now I think the actors have to be much more entrepreneurial. And there are tools out there for, for them to be. I mean, like, you know, there many young actors are making webisode series. And then those are sometimes picked up and become pilots for network or cable channels. And those are also ways for them to advertise themselves. I think that's one way. You know, another way that ACT does it is that we have on staff very strong coaches. They're teaching in the graduate program. They're also available for every show that we do. So when we do a show like uh, King Charles III, which is running right now, we have a dialect coach on site. So even though actors come in 
trained in a dialect, that coach is ensuring that their dialect is really excellent throughout their rehearsal period and as they come to performance. I think those kind, that kind of ex additional support is key. That's tremendous. Mm -hmm. That's tremendous. So describe the program. Uh, d describe your MFA program, um, and in particular, uh, initially, where the students come from, mm -hmm. and then how they experience the program as it unfolds. So we audition uh, around the country for this program. We audition in San Francisco and in Chicago and in New York. But that we, we also uh, accept auditions from international students who come to one of those cities and audition. And we take about a dozen people a year, and we see about 275 to 300 people a year for those 12 slots. So we audition in those cities, and then we select about 30 people who are finalists who come to ACT for a weekend and we really put them through their paces. They take three classes, they repeat their audition material for Carrie Perloff and our casting director, they meet the artistic staff, they meet students, they see plays, they meet um, the education staff, and we just get a sense of who feels like they would add to our community, and they get a sense of whether or not they want to be part of that community. So that's the process for coming into the program. And then there, any student who comes in and is passed on year by year, uh, is there for three years, um, allowing for summers off when they maybe go and work elsewhere. And uh, each year the program is distinct, but they're, they're captive. <laughs> they're pretty much captive from 9 in the morning till 10 or 11 at night, about five to six days a week, from the middle of September to the middle of May. And they're taking classes in voice production, in uh, text work, in dialects, in styles of acting. In, um, there's a class in cultural landscapes that's really all about discovering other cultural institutions in San Francisco, which uh, by visiting them, by, seeing, by going to hear jazz or going to an art museum or going to the opera, makes them think more uh, specifically and imaginatively about what theater can be and what's the role of the actor. So they take a class like that. They take classes where they're just reading plays. They have experiences like they did today, where they go to a conservatory hour and we have guest artists. They'll have, the, today they had one with Annette Benning, who's an alum of the program. Uh, recently they had a conservatory hour with the entire cast of King Charles III. They'll have a master class with Bill Irwin later this year. The idea is to mix up what their regular fare is with people who might inspire them differently. So they go through the first year of the program, and they're working primarily on freeing themselves up, learning basic skills, working with realistic material, realistic plays. They go into the second year of the program, and they focus primarily on classics. Shaw and Shakespeare and Wilde, for instance. Uh, they have a Shakespeare school tour in the middle of the second year, and they go to about 15 or 20 schools in the Bay Area and perform an hour and 20 minute version of a Shakespeare play. And those are incredibly popular productions. We have schools, line, more schools that want us to come than we can come to visit. Uh, and then in the third year, they are given opportunities on ACT's main stage. They're all in Christmas Carol. Some of them are in other plays as well. And they're in full productions that, all, that also happen at the Strand or in our costume shop. Those happen in the first and second year too, but the third years uh, are, are maybe um, more featured. There's also something that's a signature feature of our program, which is, we call it the Sky Festival. And in January of each year, we, we stop all classes and instead take proposals from students. And over a two and a half week period, take about 14 proposals and allow students to rehearse two shows at a time. And then over a three day period, see all 14. Mm -hmm. And students, sometimes these are passion projects where students sometimes may propose, I want to do Richard II, or they may propose an original piece. And we've actually had people do pieces in the Sky Festival that went on after school. Uh, we just had something this fall that landed in the New York uh, Fringe Festival. And in fact, it was a photo of an actor who just graduated a year ago doing the newest version of a piece she developed in the Sky Festival, and that kicked off the review of the whole Fringe Festival. You've mentioned the content of the MFA program. Uh, describe how that 
how those programs uh, integrate with the community and how the MFA program exploits the assets of San Francisco as a city? Uh, I think one of the ways that we do that is through the citizen artist component of the MFA program. And that's a strain in the training that's really managed with our, and through our education department at ACT, which is separate from the training department. Uh, and through the Citizen Artist Program, students develop skills in teaching artistry. They learn how to lead a high school classroom, maybe a very difficult kind of high school classroom, you know, a, a last chance high school or an in, uh, inner city high school. They learn something about what it is to work with community groups that aren't necessarily uh, the typical audience at ACT. Um, a year ago, a group of students under the guidance of uh, the education department developed a piece with non-actors, people who are recovering from homelessness, and they acted alongside them in telling their stories. And that piece was performed at a um, uh, hospitality house, and it was performed at Grace Cathedral, as well as at ACT itself. And one of the things that I think is so wonderful about this program is that, first of all, it makes more people in San Francisco aware about the MFA, and it makes the actors aware about all different aspects of San Francisco. But I think a key um, element for an actor in training is to develop empathy. And the more they develop empathy, the better their range is for playing characters. And when they go out and work with communities who are not familiar with theater, who might be experiencing theater for the very first time through these actors, they, uh, our actors develop um, a greater capacity to appreciate all forms of humanity. Well, this has been so interesting. I, I am really interested in seeing how ACT continues to develop as an organization and as, as how this program continues to develop. Melissa Smith, thank you so much for sharing some of the work of ACT, and thank you so much for your insights. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure.